Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back. In today's video, I have a bunch of new things here that I wanted to try out that have been accumulating over here. I don't have everything to do a full face of first impressions, but I have enough to do a majority of my face and first impressions. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that, but I'm going to roll with it anyways. So before we get into today's video, I'd love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me and let's get to it. So I don't really have a new foundation to try. Well, that's kind of a lie. I do have the new Tarte C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. It's just in the shade that's too light for my skin tone right now. I did fall asleep in my self-tanner last night, so I marinated in it a little bit longer than I hoped, but that's okay. I'm going to be trying out a newer one that I have been testing out, the LYS Triple Fix, so I'll use that one. But before I go in with foundation, I'm going to add a bit of my e.l.f. Acne Fighting Putty Primer. I have been loving this stuff. I kind of warm it up in between my fingers and then I start off in the center of my face and then I blend towards the outer portion. By the way, the self-tanner I used was the Coco and Eve stuff that I recently got. I think it's pretty nice. Like the color is nice. I like it so far. I don't have any patchiness issues except for like around my wrists and stuff. I'm not very experienced in self-tanner so that's a given. So now I'm going to be using this foundation here, the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation in the shade MN3. And I have been using this stuff a lot recently. I really, really like it so far. I think I've used it at least four or five times since my initial video. And I do have some updated thoughts. I do find that it's quite reminiscent of the uh, M Cosmetics cushion foundation, but obviously there's a difference in texture. This one is a bit more gel-like, whereas the M Cosmetics one is more serum-y. And obviously this one does have a bit more coverage and a bit more glow, but it just really reminds me of the M Cosmetics one for some reason. So I think that's why I've been really drawn to using this one so much. And I find that it wears very beautifully as well. I was a bit nervous that it wasn't going to last on my oilier complexion, but it does wear really nicely. It just starts to get a little heavier in the afternoon, but that doesn't really bother me because it looks so good. And also it's been pretty reliable, like it's played well with pretty much everything I've used. I've never had an issue with it and it's really quick and easy to apply. So I feel good enough to say that I fully recommend this foundation. So now I'm just gonna take my beauty blender just to go over everything, make sure I don't have any excess foundation on there. I think it was good that I didn't go in with a, a new foundation today because I do have some things I'm a little bit cautious about. I'm feeling unsure about a few things. So it's good to try it all on a base that I know of. Oh no, the cat hair chronicles begin. Now I'm going to be trying out the NARS Radiant Creamy Color Corrector. I'll try the shade light. I feel like that makes the most sense. I thought it was just gonna be like the same little doe foot, but it's like a, this little cute little brush. Look how cute. Kind of like those classic lip glosses in the past. I'm just gonna brush like that much on. So I feel like I don't need too, too much. I just wanted to try the texture out. And I'm gonna blend it out with my sponge today. See how that goes. I'm gonna bring it up into this area here because I have some blueness that I like to brighten up. I think I put too much pressure with the sponge on this side. I feel like it just sopped it up. So I'm just gonna add more on here. The side looks a little bit better. This feels exactly like their concealer, which is expected because of the name. But I was kind of hoping that it would, it would be a little bit thinner in consistency because I do find that it just looks like a concealer under there. And I worry if I add more concealer on top of it, it's gonna look a little cakey. Like it's a thicker, more dense texture, but we'll see. It's still kind of undetectable in there. I just don't know how that's going to layer, but I think it did a good job. Like it's definitely corrected. For my concealer, I'm going to use the Fenty Beauty one. I've been really enjoying my experience with this concealer. I looked back at my older videos using this and I used to find this to be really, really drying under the eye, but I don't have that experience now. I wonder if they've made like little minor changes in the formula or maybe my under eyes have just changed since then, could be, but I have been really liking it. Plus it hasn't been creasing, I've just been using it every day since my full face of Fenty Beauty. It's 
kind of noticing that my under eyes look a little bit not cakey but like a little bit thicker than usual like it's kind of texture enhancing so maybe it's the combination of like the concealer and the color corrector but i'm a little weary for my powder today i'm going to be trying out the elf halo glow setting powder for the first time a couple weeks ago i asked you guys what your favorite powder from the drugstore was and i got an overwhelmingly response for this guy here so i'm excited to try it out i managed to get it open i'm going to apply it like i would all my other under eye powders i'm just going to apply it to my under eyes to begin with Yeah, I think that looks nice. I went a little hard on this eye here. I picked up a bit more than I would have liked, but it still looks quite nice. It's not like the most blaring under eye powder, but I'm still happy with how this looks. It doesn't look like it's um, accentuating anything. Maybe just a little, little bit, but not bad. I feel like this just because I have quite a bit of product under my eyes today now, but I'm excited to see how that looks on the face. I feel like I'll like it on the face a lot better than under the eyes. I wouldn't say it, it competes with my Pat McGrath under eye powder, but it looks good. For my bronzer, I feel like using my Patrick Ta duo, and I think I'm just gonna go in with the cream side today. And I'm using my Melt 777 brush to apply that. Why did I just close that? That is so inconvenient. Uh, I haven't used this in a bit. I feel like I've been cycling through a bunch of bronzers, but I forgot how nice this color is. I feel like my voice sounds a little raspy today. The air quality outside is really, really bad. It's making my voice sound a little sexy. <laughs> I love how barely there that bronzer looks today. Well, it's there, but less noticeable than the past. Highlighter. I'm going to finally try out this one from Pat McGrath. This is the Skin Fetish Divine Glow Highlighter in the shade Golden Nectar. I'm gonna grab my favorite brush, BMX Glow Brush. From Moda Pro. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit at first because this looks like it's going to be pigmented. It is. It's very, very, very blinding. I went in with such a little sweep. That was crazy. Honestly, I'm getting like the same texture as her satin eyeshadows. It's a little bit texture enhancing for the tops of my cheekbones here. It almost looks foiled. Mm, I think a little too metallic for my tastes. I'm being honest, it's very eyeshadow vibes. I don't know if I really like that. Here, I'll bring you guys in a little bit closer. Hopefully you can see what I mean. But it's like very texture enhancing. It's like sitting on top of my cheekbones. Can you see that? I think that's way too metallic for my tastes. I'm going to take my sponge again. I'm going to spray a bit of Fix Plus on there. I'm gonna make sure it's in my sponge and not just like on top. I'm just kind of redampening this and this is a very hydrating facial spray so maybe it'll rehydrate this area, kind of bring down that texture enhancing quality that that had. Okay, that definitely helped like a ton, but it's still not a favorite. Oh, that's too bad. That's insane. It literally feels like one of her eyeshadows. The base product kind of felt a little chalky. Moving on, I really want to try out the ColourPop Cheek Dews. I have two shades here. They look quite similar. So I have Cherish You and Sour Cherry. They're both very vibrant colors. So this might throw off my whole plan I had today, but that's okay. Ooh, I don't know if I like these colors, you guys. I don't know if I actually want to use these. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, this is the shade Cherish You and Sour Cherry. You know what? I'll go for it. I think I'm going to go with this one here. This is a little... Cool tone, I don't know. I'll go with this one, which is Sour Cherry. It's gonna go off with the product on my hand here. So this is a, a serum blush. So I think they were trying to like do M Cosmetics a touch. I'm just building it up a touch just to see how it builds. And I also want to see what it actually looks like on the skin because it was getting a little sheer there and it looks a little bit patchy in some areas like it's not applying in a smooth manner it kind of grabs onto some areas 
because I'm gonna look a little bit burnt today, obviously. I think the color's kind of throwing me off. This isn't a color I usually reach for. I think it looks a little bit too raw on my skin. I'm not initially a fan. I think it might settle nicely, but it does seem like it's fading already. I don't know, is it disappearing? I thought I just had a bunch on. Is like, hello? Weird, I'm gonna keep an eye on that. <laughs> I think it's like actually disappearing. What's next? Eyebrows. I have a few eyebrow things. I think it's a little too late to try this one out. I feel like I need to use this before I apply any makeup, but I purchased the Refi, um, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't have a sticker on it, but the brow gel. And this is to get like those really nice flat feathery brow look. So I might try this in my next bid, but I also have the new Makeup Forever brow products. So they came out with a product similar to the M Cosmetics brow cream. So I'm excited to give this a, a shot. But see, it has a very similar wand. So I'm very excited to try that out today. So it looks like they launched two different eye pencils as well. So this one here is the classic kind of thick triangle. I'm not a super fan of this type of brow pencil. I find it to be harder to control and um, it fills in my brows a bit too much, but I think they also launched like a classic pencil. Yeah, this is the one I'll be using today, but just a classic round fine tip brow pencil. It's called Aqua Resist Brow Definer. I'm using the shade 40 Medium Brown today. Let's see how this goes. My eyebrows are in dire need of a tint, so we'll be able to really see how this product performs. It feels like a stiffer formula, which I, I do like in an eyebrow pencil. Like I see myself using this, but I don't think it's the most unique. It feels pretty comparable to a lot of things out there. I think it's a bit stiffer than the Kosas brow pencil I've been using a lot recently. This one you have to kind of go over your brows a bit more to fill it in, but I don't mind that because then you don't mess up the lines of your brows much. And I like how it has more of a matte finish, like on my skin here, it doesn't look shiny, which I do really like. But it still looks like a natural brow finish, if that makes sense. That was decently quick, and if you know me, you know I don't like to spend that much time on my brows. Like I'm like, let's get a move on. Now let's try out this. I'm going to be using shade 40 medium brown once again in this product. This is called the Aqua Resist Brow Fixer. So this one's brush is on an angle. It feels quite comparable, honestly, from what I'm seeing immediately. Like, it's performing the exact same way as the M Cosmetics one, but I think it's less volumizing. Like, it doesn't have that m many fibers in it, maybe? Or maybe it's just because it's a lighter shade that my eyebrows just don't look as full, but I don't mind it. I usually brush my hairs over here because I have a very fine amount over here, and I just want to kind of complete my art that I, I kind of screwed that up for me today. Uh-oh. I think the M Cosmetics one has a better hold. I think my brows are already kind of falling out of place. And I was trying to build up the hold over here, but it's not really working very good. Products having a issue adhering over here. Might be because I put some foundation there. I don't know, but it's having an issue. I'm looking at my face again and I really don't like my blush. <laughs> I forgot to go in with some more powder, so I'm whipping out my Halo Glow once again. Taking this clean powder brush, this is a Royal and Langnickel Balm 125 brush. It's gonna set pretty much everywhere in the center. Ooh, that's nice. From what I'm seeing, it looks like I didn't even put powder on my face, but it's set. Okay, you guys, thank you for the killer recommendation so far. I have a lot of hope in this one. It doesn't feel tightening at all. It does have that glow running through it. Is it a little bit like glittery or no? Or is that from like something else on my desk? I don't think it does. No, I must have been in a brush somewhere. But that looks nice. It's nice to set the makeup. It looks good initially. We'll see how it um, actually holds on to my makeup here. So I guess this is the base all completed. I do like the looks of it overall. I just am not a fan of the blush, but everything else looks looks good. I'm so silly. The glitter is from the highlight, <laughs> not the powder. Okay, I'm going to prime my eyes with the Rare Beauty Eye Primer. I forgot about this one and I just found it just now and I wanted to give it another shot. I have so many eyeshadow palettes here, it's insane. And they're all like, 
very creative ones and I don't know what to do. Feeling overwhelmed, but like in a good way, if that makes sense. Is that a thing? I don't know. I'll give you guys a palette tour. So this one, I think I might use today. This is the High Tide palette from ColourPop. It's this gorgeous all teal palette. Looks really fun, matches my headband. And that same collection, they launched this one, Fine Feathered Palette, which is all these berry tones. I also got the Cherry Crush one, which is again, berry and pink tones. I don't know if I am really into that one, if I'm being honest, I like the other two a bit more. I also have this MAC one that looks incredible. I love the packaging to begin with, but this is, I don't know, it doesn't have a name, this one. If you recognize it it's like a spring palette it has all these gorgeous colors very very fun to look at and then I also got the Temptalia and Sydney Grace um, palette collection she launched six palettes but three of them are for light skin tones and three of them are for darker skin tones which I think is really really cool I've never seen that before but I think that's a thing that Sydney Grace does as a brand which is very interesting so this one is Radiant Reflection, which kind of gives like muted rainbow vibes to me. There's also this one here, which I think is my favorite. And the one I can't pronounce, obviously. The last one on the horizon. I feel like I need to save these for a different video. I don't feel creative enough today for this, to take this on, but these are beautiful. They look so, so nice. I'm gonna save that for another time when I do know what to do. <laughs> but I think I'm going to go with my gut. I'm gonna use the High Tide palette. I'm going to start off with this shade here, Currents. I'm just going to completely wing this look. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to go with the flow. It is an ocean themed palette after all. I've strayed away from blues for such a long time because I feel like they always pull really weird on my undertone. They always look green, but since this is teal, it does have a lot of green in the actual color. So should be fine, should be fine. That is a very pretty color. And good payoff too. I'm now taking a Smith 230 and I'm going to go in with this shade here, New Wave. Well, that one's a bit powdery. A bit, I mean a lot. And I'm going to bring that on the outer portion of my eye and into the crease to kind of define it a touch more. Ooh, very pretty color. I'm going to take that first shade again, Currents, on a flat shading brush and I'm just gonna bring it in the inner corner right here and I'm packing it with this Smith 253. And then I'm going to take the middle shade, which is must see, <laughs> musty, <laughs> must see in the center. This is performing really, really nicely, especially for these types of blues, teals. Like usually they are a bit more tricky to formulate, I've found, but this looks nice. I'm now taking the shade Free Floating, which is a lighter shimmer shade. I'm gonna bring that right in the center. Now I'm gonna do some things and it might go south, but I'm willing to risk it all because it's just makeup after all, it washes off. I'm gonna take this tiny pencil brush. It doesn't have uh, a brand, it's just a little pencil brush. And I'm going to dip into this shade Urchin. I'm just kind of looking straight into my mirror. I'm gonna bring that right here. And then I'm going to go into Lunar, which is the deepest shade of the palette. I'm actually having a ton of fun right now. And we're gonna deepen that up. It's a weird little freckle. We're going to take a angled brush now. This is a ColourPop E30. And I'm going to take that first shade again, Urchin. And I feel like doing maybe like a smoky wing. I'm actually gonna dip kind of in between Urchin and Lunar. So I feel like I need some depth, a little bit more depth. It's falling out all over my highlighter that I loved so much earlier. This is performing really, really nicely. Like I'm not having any issues whatsoever except for them being a little bit powdery and this is going to be a disaster to try to remove off my face. Now I'm going to take a mixture of uh, Urchin and New Wave. So these two here. And then I'm going to bring that a majority of the way of my lower. And then I'm going to wipe off my brush and dip into Currents again. Finish that off to kind of soften it up in the inner portion there. And then I'm going to take my finger with Free Floating again, the lightest shimmer shade. Pop that in the inner corner. I'm just gonna kind of blend at the edges just to get that smoky effect. 
Wow, this is just going and going and going. Oh no. <laughs> they also launched uh, these little eyeliners. And should I just go all, all the way? Yeah, I'm gonna use both of them. So these are in the shades Zulu and Cat Suit. So I'm gonna first take Cat Suit. I'm just gonna put it on my waterline going halfway across. Then I'm grabbing Zulu. And then I'm gonna blend that into that lighter one. Very nice, that was really easy to do actually. I can't believe how well that worked. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to go into things with full confidence even though you know that it, it might not work out. I just have a, a fallout issue I'm gonna have to deal with in a couple minutes here. And this little detail here is just to add something a little, a little zimpant, a little different, you know? Fun, I really like that. I was hoping that since I set this area with powder that it was gonna whisk away gracefully, but it indeed did not. I'm just gonna have a little bit of a gray tinge to my skin today. So if you purchase this palette, just know to do your eyes first before doing your base, because now I have to like go in and retouch everything again. But with that being said, I'm just gonna pop off camera, do this eye real quick, then fix up my makeup a bit, and I'll be right back. Okay, while I was doing this eye, I have discovered a few things that I'm concerned about. I'm noticing that my skin is starting to look more and more metallic as it settles, and I don't really know if I like the e.l.f. powder on this part of my face. Like, it looks fine on my forehead, like my forehead looks still a little bit shiny, but I feel like I look metallic. I don't know if it's just a combination of everything going on on my face right now. There's a few things that are a bit rough around the edges, I did have to kind of play around and try to remove like the fallout from the palette which speaking of when I was working on the eyeliner on this side I'll show you how I dip into shadows when I'm doing eyeliners I usually go like this but look at the this shade right here it's so soft that it looks very old already like I've only used the shadow once obviously and it's very very powdery see what I mean like it's kind of flawed and there's like dents in it and stuff from like there being air bubbles in the actual shadow so I might have gotten like a weird one but there's like a lot of kickback and usually that's not like something I really complain about in eyeshadow palettes but this is a little bit insane here I just kicked off the kickback so you can see there there's like already a huge dent because it's so soft it could be because they wanted them to be a lot more pigmented which they are they do perform really really nice it's just, I don't know, all over my chest, <laughs> I have fallout. But here's the eyes, almost all done. I have some mascaras to use now. I have the Essence mascaras, they sent over all of them this week. I've never tried um, the Lash Princess, but they have a bunch. They have the False Lash Effect mascara, Volume mascara, Curl in Volume, and Sculpted Volume. And they all sound really nice, but I think I'll go with this one, False Lash Effect, if you like this look could use that kind of a look. I'm just gonna quickly curl my lashes. My favorite eyelash curler, by the way, is the Shuamara one. Ooh, I like the shape of this wand. It's nice and tapered, so it's thin at the top. I really like that, so I can get into all the lashes in the inner corner. Let's see this, ooh, ooh, ooh. I like that it piles on a lot of product quickly, so it's like a quick, quick scare off. I'm also noticing here, like when I was trying to do that detail, it's kind of lifting off of itself. So I'm having a little bit of issues with the, the palette. I don't know, it's my favorite. I love the look I did, but I don't know if I'm gonna be able to recommend the palette. I'm also gonna throw this one on the lower. I feel like the lower could use some volume and drama. Yeah, this is a very dramatic mascara. I'm digging it. I hope it wears nicely. Look at that. Hello. <laughs> That's a lot of lash. I really like that mascara. That was super easy to apply and it, it does give a lot of lash. I like that. So here are the eyes all finished. I think they turned out super, super fun. 
Also, the, the shimmer on my eyes is kind of um, disappearing a little bit, but not bad. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm in love with this eye look. It's super fun. I'm happy I went with the flow. Okay, now let's move on to lips. So for my lips, I'm going to try out yet another ColourPop product. These are the new Glossy Lip Stains. I have these two shades that I think might work. I quickly swatched them. I'm going to disregard the, the cheek color because it's a bit cool toned for what I'm wanting today. So I might go in with one of these peachier colors. I do have a ton of other colors as well, but I think those two will flatter this look the most out of the colors that I have in front of me. Ooh, what's this one? I actually wanted to swatch this one. Bit too coral for today. That one is Roll Out. This brighter one is First Bite. And this one over here is Twice Shy. I'm leaning towards this one the most. I wanted to see the power of the stain. Stains. Stains quite well, actually. <laughs> so that's good. So for our lip liner, I did receive these new buxom ones, but I don't have a tone that would suit this here, sadly, so I'm going to use these in a different video. So I'm going to quickly line my lips with the Pat McGrath Buff Lip Liner. Now going in with First Bite. Not very glossy, if I'm being honest. It's shiny, like a little bit of a shine, but it's not glossy. So here is the finished final look. There's a few things that are a little bit rough around the edges. If I were to redo this video, I would have definitely done the eyes first because I feel like the undertone under my eyes here looks a little gray and off now. I'm not a super fan of how my base turned out, if I'm being honest. Um, I look a little bit textured. And when I say a little bit, I feel a lot bit textured. I don't like it. I like the eyes and I like the lips. So let's start off with the newer things today. So for the NARS color correctors, I'm not really sure how I feel about these yet. I felt like they were a little bit thick for color correctors. So this is something I'm going to have to play around with a little bit more over the month. See how it plays with other concealers. Could be just the mix of the Fenty one with this one that made it look a little bit more cakey under there. Not an initial super fan of that product. For the Cheek Dew from ColourPop, I would say a pass. It might just be the specific shades that I have here, but I don't really like how it performed. And I did add another layer when I was fixing my makeup, and honestly, I feel like it just disappears after a while, and it doesn't look very flattering. It's not anything special compared to all the other blushes I have in my collection. If I had these in there, I don't think I'd ever reach for them. For the highlighter, I wouldn't recommend this one either. I find it to be way too texture enhancing and too thick of a formula. It was just really unnatural looking, but it would be a really pretty eyeshadow. It's just a little bit too thick of a consistency for me to use as a highlighter. Sadly, really not a fan of this one. I would say pass. For the Halo Glow powder from e.l.f., I feel like I need to try this one out again because I'm not a fan of how it's looking on my face today, like especially in the center here. On my forehead, I don't mind the looks of it, but just in the center here, it look almost silvery. Like it looks silver on my skin, and I, I don't know if I'm liking that. With the C eyes, I'm feeling a little scaly, Little Mermaid-esque. Like, I'm a fish. I don't know. Not a vibe. For the eyebrow products, honestly, I feel like I will use these eyebrow products if I want something a bit softer. I really like how it turned out. It does feel a little bit stiffer than the M Cosmetics brow cream, but like, I don't mind that. I feel like my eyebrows are going to stay in this position, and I think it's a really flattering look. I will definitely use them. For the eyeshadow palette, I love how my eyes turned out today. I just don't know how much I'll actually be using this palette in my collection. I definitely won't be using this like on a day-to-day -day thing. But for a monochromatic teal palette, I really like the amount of depth in here. I feel like all shades belong in here. Like everything has its place and I do really like that. There's just minor concerns about how powdery some of them are, but I feel like they're 
that powdery to get this kind of payoff on the actual eye. So in that instance, I think it's fine. So take what you will with that. If you're really, really drawn to this eyeshadow palette, I don't think you'd be disappointed in it. There's just slight little issues that you can totally work around. It's just not an immediate favorite to me, if that makes sense. I think my favorite product of today is this mascara here. I am really loving the looks of my lashes. It was really quick and easy to apply. I just really hope that it stays looking good. I hope it doesn't crumble or melt off my face. Honestly, really great. I see myself using this a lot since it was so quick and it built up the volume and length right away. I love easy mascaras. It's one of my favorite things when I discover a new easy mascara. And finally, for the glossy lip stain, I wouldn't say that they're glossy <laughs> at all. They, it's just a little bit glowy. It's a glowy lip stain. They feel quite tacky on the lips, like a, a classic lip stain. There's no gloss in sight, so I don't know why they named them that. But taking the gloss out of the entire situation, I do really like how it feels on the lips. It doesn't feel so, so tacky, but it's a nice stained color. I wanna wipe it off a bit so you can see what it actually looks like. Yeah, pretty good. Just kinda gotta blend my lip liner a little bit in there. Honestly, pretty cute. I do like myself a good lip stain, especially if I'm going out or for dinner or something. They're a lot easier to manage throughout the night. So I do see myself using these, honestly. And the colors seem nice. I'm excited to try them out over this month. And my last favorites of today were these eyeliners. They're really, really easy to work with. And usually by this time, I'd be able to tell if they are faders in the waterline, but they haven't budged. I've honestly loved a couple of the gel liners over the years from ColourPop. I find them to be quite solid. Um, they're very pigmented, easy to use, and they stay put really well. And also they're fun to blend out to use as shadows themselves. They're quite versatile and I love how many shades that they offer. So I'm really happy that these two shades performed beautifully today. I can't believe how easy I achieved that gradient in the waterline. It was awesome. So highly recommend the gel liners. I know these are like cult favorites, but I think that's all I have to say for today's video. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. It means so much to me. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of the products I mentioned in today's video in the description down below as always, and I will see you in the next one. Love you. Bye.